Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the MLB slate on DraftKings for Thursday, June the 13th. Uh, we're going to take a look at this nine-game Thursday slate, uh, cover the main slate, no early today, just two early games, so I probably will not be playing that, and I'm not going to be making a video on it. Uh, so we're just going to look at the nine games at night, uh, start off at the top of the pl pitcher player pool, and work our way down to the bottom. Uh, I'll talk about all the options that I'm going to be considering today all the guys that I'm going to be playing that I'm going to have some exposure to. Uh, then we'll look at three hitters that I really like. We'll talk about some stacks that I'll be going to. Uh, then towards the end of the video, we'll look at some BVP plays. Uh, just before we do get started, guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button down below so that way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Um, so starting off at the top of the pitcher player pool, Matt Boyd is our most expensive option on DraftKings today. He is 10700 and he gets a matchup with the Royals. Um, I do like this matchup a lot for Matt Boyd. Uh, the Royals do strike out versus left-handed pitching. If we look at their projected lineup for tomorrow, once you get past like the top four, it's a pretty easy lineup to navigate through. Like Chesler Cuffer, Gutierrez, Nicky Lopez, Maldonado, Billy Hamilton. Those are some pretty easy outs for Matt Boyd. Matt Boyd's been great this year. He's made a ton of improvements. Uh, but I just can't pay more salary for him than a guy like Jacob deGrom. Uh, Jacob deGrom, I know, has not been as good just as of late, but he's still one of the best pitchers in the league. He's cheaper than Matt Boyd, and he just has so much upside. I know Boyd's shown, like, K potential this year, but I feel like nobody has the double-digit K potential that Jacob deGrom has. In his last start against the Rockies, he got 10 Ks in that start. Even though he hasn't shown a lot of uh, big K games this year, he still pitches very deep into games. He's very efficient with his pitch count. Uh, I really like DeGrom here against the Cardinals. This is a Cardinals lineup that's going to roll out probably two or three lefties at most. Matt Carpenter, Colton Wong, and Dexter Fowler are the only three lefties in the projected lineup. DeGrom struggles more with lefties than righties. Righties just can't hit against DeGrom. Uh, DeGrom very good versus righties. Gets a ton of strikeouts versus right-handed hitters. Uh, this is a very right-handed heavy Cardinals lineup. So I really like DeGrom here. I like the fact that he's cheaper than Matt Boyd. I think he has just as much upside as, De, uh, as Matt Boyd, and he's $300 less. Kershaw against the Cubs is probably just going to be a, a void for me. Just don't think Kershaw has that K potential that a guy like DeGrom has or that Matt Boyd has. Uh, so no interest in Kershaw. Honestly, I'd probably play David Price over Kershaw. Price is 400 less than him. He gets a matchup against the Rangers. Uh, this is a Rangers team that does struggle against lefties. Uh, they are going to be rolling out a lot of lefties in their lineup as well. Looks like they're going to have at least two, probably three lefties in there, maybe four, uh, but like Mazzara, Odor. Uh, if they put Danny Santana, or Danny Santana is a switch hitter, but he's much better uh, batting left-handed anyways. And Price, also a heavy favorite here, 215 favorite, just 3.6 implied run total for the Rangers. This is a Rangers team that does struggle outside of Globe Life Park in Texas, so I like David Price, but still I can't play Price over a guy like DeGrom or Matt Boyd. Uh, but over Kershaw, definitely I'd play Price over Kershaw, especially since he's cheaper. I think Price honestly gives you more K upside. Uh, and then once you get past those guys, there's not a lot that I love. I think in this mid-range, my favorite play would probably be like John Gray, even though he's pitching in cores. Uh, he's going to be facing the Padres, and this is a Padres team that does roll out a lot of righties. Uh, they're going to be right-handed heavy. Only lefty in the projected lineup is Eric Hosmer. Uh, usually, Coors pitchers don't get a ton of ownership, so I don't expect Gray to be very popular today. I feel like this is probably a slate where we're going to be wanting to go with a star pitcher and then like a cheap pitcher. So I don't know if Gray's going to be like an optimal play, but in tournaments, a low-owned guy that has upside, John Gray's definitely going to be a guy I look to. Um, a guy that a lot of people are probably going to pair with their stud pitcher is Marcus Stroman. Marcus Stroman facing the Orioles, 7,600. You play Stroman and a guy like DeGrom together, and you're still left with 4K remaining per player. So I have a feeling a lot of people are going to look to Stroman today as an SP2. I think he does make sense here against an Orioles team that does strike out versus righties. It's a really bad lineup. Only thing not going to get Stroman, I guess, is that it's a pretty favorable hitter's park. Stroman has not been good lately either. He has had some tougher matchups, having to pitch in cores and then against the Diamondbacks. Uh, that's not the easiest matchup, I would imagine, especially because the Diamondbacks have been hitting so well as of late. Uh, but Stroman is a guy that has a little bit of K upside. We saw him spark a little bit of K upside earlier this year. 7Ks against Oakland, 6Ks against them, 6Ks against the White Sox. Uh, I believe he has faced the Orioles once this year and uh, wasn't that great. Just 12 DraftKings points. 
He went five and two-thirds innings, allowed nine hits, two runs, five Ks. Uh, but he's still only 7,600. He does have a little bit of upside here, probably 20, 25-point upside against the Orioles. So he's a guy that you could look to. Same could be said for Jack Flaherty against the Mets. Uh, Stroman and Flaherty in that 7K range are definitely my favorite two plays there. Uh, and then looking for cheap plays, if you're wanting to go really cheap at SP2 and pair a guy, a cheap guy with DeGrom, uh, my favorite play here is definitely Homer Bailey at 5,200 against the Tigers. I actually like Homer Bailey quite a bit today as a cheap SP2. Um, so I played a decent amount of Homer Bailey on the last slate where he pitched against the White Sox, and he was so cheap, he was 4,500. He honestly didn't kill you, even though he only got 8.7 drafting points. At 4,500, really, or when he was 4,500 then, you really only wanted about 10 drafting points from him to hit val- uh, hit value. Now that he's 5,200 in tournaments, for him to be a good tournament play, you probably want him to get at least 15 DK points, closer to 20. And I think Bailey does have that kind of potential here against this Tigers team that does strike out a lot versus right-handed pitching. They are going to be rolling out a lot of righties, only three lefties in the projected lineup. And Homer Bailey actually has a little bit of K upside. Uh, we saw him get some strikeouts during, uh, in some starts this year, like 5Ks against the White Sox, 6Ks against the Yankees. I wouldn't say that he's a pitch-to-contact uh, kind of pitcher. Like He does have swing and miss stuff. He does have a slider that he can get swings and misses on. Uh, and this Tigers team will chase pitches. They will strike out. Homer Bailey is dirt cheap. Pitching at home in Kauffman Stadium, a really good pitcher's park. I actually like him quite a bit today at 5,200. Even if he struggles a bit and he only gets or if he gives up like three or four runs, if he can just mitigate those runs with a couple strikeouts and get you 10, 15 drafting points, he's a pretty good value at 5,200. And if he goes, uh, he goes for 20, 25, which I think he has the potential to in this matchup, then he's probably one of the best pitchers on the slate if he gets that score at his price tag. So I like going to Homer Bailey quite a bit to pair with either if you want to play him with DeGrom or if you want to play him with uh, Matt Boyd or David Price, whoever. I really like Homer Bailey as a cheap SB2. Uh, but besides Bailey, I'm not going to be going to Yanoa or Quantrill or Nova. Just don't know if those guys have the potential that Homer Bailey does or even like 15, 20 point upside. Like uh, Nova against the Yankees, just can't see myself going there. Quantrill in course field, just that's a no go for me. Yanoa gets a good matchup with the Blue Jays, but Yanoa is also not that great of a pitcher. And I don't know how deep he's going to go. Like his last few starts, He's gone about 80 pitches. Usually that's about where he goes. You don't have that 90, 95, 100 uh, pitch upside that you do out of like Homer Bailey. He can go uh, 90, 95 pitches if he's pitching really well. But I guess you know, since he's facing a bad Blue Jays lineup, he's not the worst value. But I still would rather play Homer Bailey. Uh, So I think that's it for pitcher, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about some bats now. Uh, So we'll start off at shortstop. I really like the Yankees here. Uh, versus Avon Nova. The Yankees are going to be a team that I load up on quite a bit today. They're pretty expensive, but if you use Homer Bailey as an SP2, it's pretty easy to fit them in. Um, a guy that I really like at shortstop, or two guys actually, you can play D.D. Gregorius at 4,300, but I think I do prefer Glaber Torres for a little bit more salary. I expect D.D. probably garners more ownership because it's a lefty, or it's, it'll be a lefty righty matchup for him. But Nova this year will still struggles to both sides of the plate. He's worse against lefties, but you can still attack him with right-handed hitters, especially a guy like Torres, a right-handed hitter that has a ton of power that can hit righties well. Uh, Nova's one of those guys who just doesn't get strikeouts. He pitches the ball in the zone. He pitches the contact. And going up against the guys, going up against guys like LeMahieu, Hicks, Voigt, Sanchez, Didi, Torres, Clint Frazier, even Kendrys Morales has a decent amount of power. Uh, These guys have a ton of power. It's a pretty favorable hitter's park as well. I'm pretty sure the White Sox Stadium is a decent hitter's park. 5.4 implied run total for the Yankees. That's a little bit lower than some of the other teams on this slate, like 6.4 for the Rockies in Coors Field, 5.5 for the Red Sox, uh, even like the Blue Jays as a cheaper team at 4.9 total. So I don't think the Yankees are going to be insanely popular today. I do like them a ton versus Nova. Uh, Nova is a pitcher that I just always look to stack against especially with a good Yankees lineup that they have, even without Stanton and Judge. This is still a really dangerous lineup, still a lineup that has a ton of power. Uh, So I love Torres, love uh, Clint Frazier as well. Don't love him as much if he's going to be batting eighth. We've seen him at times bat sixth, sometimes fifth. I would prefer if he bats fifth or sixth, but even if he's towards the bottom of the order, he's still going to be a guy that I try and get some exposure to. Uh, He's a guy that's just never owned. Every time I stack the Yankees, I always make sure to get Clint Frazier in there. And usually when I look at 
lineups after the Yankees game started. Clint Frazier is like 5 10% owned pretty much every time, which is way too low. This is a guy that has a ton of power versus lefties and righties. Uh, just goes way overlooked a lot uh, when you're stacking the Yankees, especially because he's batting to the bottom of the order. And usually bottom of the order guys don't get much ownership. Kendrick Morales batting seventh will probably get some ownership because he's so cheap, but I expect Clint Frazier to be pretty much unowned today. Brett Gardner is probably going to be unowned. Uh, even if you're stacking the Yankees, don't want to overlook the bottom of the order, guys, especially a guy like Clint Frazier that does have a ton of power. 11 home runs on the year. Uh, Nova will give up home runs, so really like Frazier and Torres uh, as a part of my Yankee stacks today. Uh, and then obviously we don't want to overlook Coors Field, especially the Rocky side. 6.4 implied run total for them versus uh, Cal Quantrill. Really like Charlie Blackman leading off, even though he's very expensive. Going with a cheap pitcher like Homer Bailey allows you to fit in a guy like Charlie Blackman. Uh, Blackman, just a great play. Anytime he's at home in cores versus a righty, you can pretty much always consider Blackman, no matter how good or bad the pitcher is. Especially a bad pitcher like Quantrill. I know Quantrill's had some decent starts this year, but uh, on the road in Coors Field, this just doesn't feel like a spot where he's going to have much, much success. We look at his starts lately. He's been better 7Ks against the Phillies, 9Ks against Toronto. Maybe because he's been better lately, people won't look to stack against him, but I definitely want to stack against him here in Coors Field. Really like these Rockies bats. I think they make for a great stack, pretty much to no surprise. Rockies are always a pretty good stack when they're in Coors, especially when they're facing bad pitchers. Uh, really like Blackman. Really like the lefties in general. Uh, Arenado did get hurt on a Wednesday in their day game, so maybe he sits out of the lineup. Maybe you get another value in there, whether it's like, uh, I, don't, I don't even know who would take his spot. Maybe they put Murphy at third base or second base and they play Mark Reynolds or something, then you could get a cheap value. But uh, do really look, do like the Rockies here, and I love Blackman leading off as an expensive play. Uh, but these are my five plays today for DraftKings. Uh, these are five guys that I really like today. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, at some stacks that I'll be going to, then we'll talk about some BVP plays. Uh, so my two favorite stacks, pretty much by a landslide, are the Rockies and the Yankees. Really like those two teams. Those are two teams I'm going to be loading up on quite a bit. Uh, hard to not like some Red Sox bats, though, as well, versus Adrian Sampson. Adrian Sampson, kind of like Ariel Gerardo, has been having some, some success lately and has been pitching pretty well, but still not a guy that I believe in, not a guy that I'm afraid to stack against. So I do like some of these Red Sox here versus Sampson, and some of them have nice prices, like Ben Attendee at 4500 Mookie and JD are both under 5 k Devers under 5 k Brock Holt as a cheap value is only 3600 so I uh, really like the Red Sox as well, but they're going to come behind the other two teams that I mentioned. Um, and if you're not playing Gabriel Yanoa, then you can definitely consider some of these Blue Jays bats for value. They are all dirt cheap. Biggio, if he leads off again, is 3800 Vlad's only 42 Guriel, 43 Grichik, 42 uh, Teles, dirt cheap. Hernandez, dirt cheap. I do like the Blue Jays as a value stack if you're not going to be going to Yanoa. Uh, but I think that's it for stacks. Mostly the Yankees and Rockies are going to be the two teams I focus on the most. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some BVP now before we end the video. Uh, starting off, Trey Mancini, 6 for 13 off of Marcus Stroman. Uh, looking at a couple of these that really stand out. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to cover the ones that stand out. Uh, Sensu Chu, 10 for 30 with two home runs off of David Price. Whit Merrifield, 12 for 28 off of Matt Boyd. Uh, Will Myers, 12 for 31 with three home runs off John Gray. Cargo, three home runs in uh, 47 ABs off of Clayton Kershaw. Anthony Rizzo, 6 for 16, two home runs off of Kershaw. Kike Hernandez, 5 for 22, two home runs off of John Lester. Uh, so those are just a couple BVP plays that really stand out. Uh, I think that is it for this video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this video, and hopefully... It did help you. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure you click that like button down below and make sure you subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Or like always, you can hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore go if you do have any questions. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed and we will see you in the next one. Good luck tonight. Peace.